Hey YouTube, welcome to Polydev tutorial series. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to create a Cypher trap in Unreal Engine using C++. Cypher is a character from Valorant. Valorant, for those of you who don't know, is a brand new tactical shooter game and is very fun to play. This video will be split into two parts and is created more towards newcomers who have little experience in using UE4 and in programming. These are the requirements you need in order to follow and understand this tutorial. I will be using UE 4.25 version in case anyone is wondering. Before we start coding, I'm going to show and break down the mechanic itself. Cypher's trap ability is called trap wire. In this ability, you throw a trap between two walls and whenever the enemy walks into it, you can not only see them through walls, but you can also slow down the movement. And a few seconds later, it will also explode, causing their camera to go dizzy. But for the sake of the simplicity, in our tutorial, we'll only be making the trap and we'll be making it so you can see them through a wall and we'll be slowing down its movement. We won't do the camera effects and stuff because this we're not making an online game, we're only making it locally, so I'm just going to keep it simple. We can break down this mechanic into two parts. The trap itself, which shows enemies upon activating and wall detection, which will happen when player activates the ability. In this video, we'll be mainly focusing on wall detection part. The wall detection is pretty simple. We're going to draw a line from player's viewpoint, and when that line hits a wall, we will draw another line from that hit point towards the direction that the wall is facing. Once that second line hits another wall, that means we have a valid location to place the trap. As for the creation and placement of the trap, I will be covering it in the next video. Before starting the project, I would like to go over the design pattern I will be using to create this mechanic. To create this mechanic, we will use a design pattern known as composition. Composition is when a class object, such as the player or character for example, uses or relies on another, ob another class object to execute its behavior. So in this tutorial, we will be creating a trap wire ability component which will take care of detecting walls and placing traps. When this trap wire object is added to the player class as a component, then the player will automatically have the ability to detect walls and place traps. This will give us flexibility and also allows us to decouple the ability behavior from character behavior. So basically, it allows us to add or remove behavior to any player that we choose. Now, without further ado, we'll get into the project. We're going to launch Unreal Engine. Make sure to choose the game project. Choose first person and make sure to choose blueprint class. And we're going to create, uh, name it as Valorant Toot, so short for tutorial. And we're going to create a project. Once we have the project up, we're going to right click, create a C++ class and choose actor component. We're going to name it ability. Make it public and we can create a class. Quick heads up, if you want to change which IDE you want to use, you can go into edit Editor Preferences, Source Code, and there you can change which IDE you want to use. Okay, now, we're going to go uh, into our C++ class, Valorant to it, into Public, and then we're going to right-click our Ability class, and create a class derived from it. And we're going to name it Trapwire, make sure it's public, and we can create a class. If you guys do not see the ability class, 
then simply close your project and reopen it. By creating a class derived from ability, what we're doing is we're creating a class that inherits from ability. By inheriting from ability, every class that is derived from this ability class gets all the functionality and data that the ability class contains. So for example, in, in Valren, every ability has a cost and amount of times it can be used. So if we put the data regarding the amount of times the ability can be used and its cost inside of the ability class, now every time we want to create a new character's ability, we can just derive it off this ability class and that new class will automatically have the data regarding how many times it can be used and the cost. Okay, once we have the trap.cpp and tra trap.h open, we're going to make some basic functions, just like in their parent class. They have begin play and tick. We need, we, these uh, functions are very crucial for our gameplay system. So first, we're going to copy them, control C, and then go into the trap and we're going to do control V. But now, because uh, these functions say that they're from ability, we need to check, make sure that this is from trap class and not ability class. So we're going to change these first. I'll make sure to put I'll make sure to put U in the front because every actor component starts with U and every actor starts with A. Once you um, once you um, once you define these functions, you need to make sure you have them declared. So here, in the trap trap by dot H, we're gonna make a protected section. So once you have the protected section, we're just gonna define this fun sorry, declare these functions as with virtual. And we're gonna declare that override because we're overriding the function. For this function, we can just copy this section. and paste it here just to make sure it's quick and then remove this clash definition and make sure it's virtual make sure to put override in the end because we're overriding the function and once that's finished you can comment this as begin play and tick function Once you finish commenting, we're going to go back into the Unreal scene. If you play right now, you realize that um, you can shoot some projectiles. This is because it's a default template, it gives you the ability to, which is great. But what we really want is to shoot a line right from our camera to a wall. And we want that line to bounce off to another wall. So to do that, we have to go back to our Visual Studio and we need to get the camera because camera is a starting point so to do that we're going to declare a player camera variable you can do that by typing in the class it's like forward declaration and we can get camera component starts with you because it's a component Once we, we're going to create a pointer to the component and call it player camera. Once you have the player camera, you go into the C++ and you have to make sure that you include cameras class files because um, without those files, you cannot access the cameras functions. 
So you hash include Right, so if you include camera camera component, this is basically will give you access to the camera's functions. And anytime you want to um, include new components of Unreal Engine framework or actors, um, or you can just simply search them in Google. You can um, go into Google and you can type in UE4 and whatever component you want. And you'll probably, you can, go into the access, the documentation, and you can see here that it tells you to include this, which you can take and copy paste into your include folder, sorry, include file. And then that's pretty much it if you want to include any of your, um, any of the different components that you might include. All right, now let's write a first function, which is drawing the ray trace or you can also call it as a line trace, which will detect walls and give you the location of the walls. So to do that, we need to create a function. We're gonna call the function detect walls because that's what the function is gonna do. And it's gonna return true or false. So it'll return a Boolean and it'll be called detect walls. Um, once you have this, if you're using uh, Visual Studio, uh, sorry, Visual Studio Community version like 2017 or 2018 and not Visual Studio Code, you can just right click and do quick actions with fractions and you can create a definition inside the CPP like so. And it will automatically create one. So if I go back into the CPP file, you can see that um, it already created one and also returns as false by default, which is great. So first, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna um, first make sure that we have the camera component because right now we just made a pointer to the component, but we don't actually have the component itself. So time to get the component. So how we can get the component is we can just say, player camera equals and you can get the owner of this component so whoever is um, using this component or has this component and want to check if it has the camera component so you're going to find component by class and it's going to be camera component that's a type so to type uh, to write camera component you have to uh, prefix it with u because all actor component starts with u you're going to say u camera component you actually have it right here and it's going to find a camera component for you and once you have that function set and ready the next thing we have to make sure uh, is to get input systems because we can't actually do these ray traces without having an input. Once we have an input, uh, when we do the input, it's going to draw the ray trace. So, for, so we also need an, in, an input component. So we're going to go back to the H file, type right near the player camera, we're going to type input uh, pointer say yep input component uh, make sure it's prefix with u because it's a u component and once we do that you're going to go back into the cpp file and we're going to define it so to define the input component, we need to get the input component from the controller. And we can get the controller from the world. So what we can do is to first we need the world and from the world we need the controller. So 
we're accessing the world and the input um, and the controller, so we need to include both of them. To do that, all you have to do is um, go into Google and just type in controller. In going to the C++ API, it says a play controller. That's fine with us. And then we're going to make sure to um, add this. Include directly. Over here. So now we have access to the controller. The last thing we need is um, the world, which is just, um, if you go back here, and type in world C++ API you get the U world and then that's where the and that's you just copy paste it again now that you have both of these what you can do now is you can get the current instance of the world And you get the first player controller that's the one that you set in your game mode and from the controller uh, you're going to get input component and that's basically your input component now, once we have this input component, we might as well bind all the buttons that we need. So, the okay, so how it works is we bind a button to a function. And so we need to make three functions. One function is to draw the line. So as cipher, you can press C and you'll draw the line. And another function is to throw the trap, which is the mouse left click. And the final function would be to retrieve the trap back, which should be F. So that means we need to bind three, three functions to three buttons. So what we're going to do next is input component. We're going to do something called bind. Bind key. Let's just go for bind key for now because um, but you can also do bind action, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just put bind key. It requires some parameters such as the key that you're going to bind and the function. Finally, also requires your, um, it also requires a reference to this component. So first, we're going to create the key and the function that it's going to be bound to. We can do it right here, it's called F key. And we'll just call it activate key. So this is the key that activates your ability. And we're going to create a function right here in your detect rules. We're going to call it void. Activate ability. We can just call it activate. We don't need to call it activate ability. Once you do this, you can just right click, click action refract refractions, and create a uh, declaration definition, and it will create one in the C blue key for you. Once the definition is created for you, you're going to go back to the bind key and first type in the key. Activate. Uh, we might change it to key just so we know we don't get um, confused between these two. And we go back. Type in key. Then um, you tell it. Um, you tell uh, exactly what you want the button to do. So I want it to be. I want the key to be activated when it's pressed. So you go. so this activates when it's pressed and you need a reference to this component 
and finally you need the function reference itself so do you type in this for reference and you have to type in the class as well and from the class you get the activate function and that's pretty much it for binding so we have to do this three more times so I'm just going to copy paste and paste all we need to replace now is this function and this keys these keys and these functions so I'm going to go back here and quickly create more keys I'm just going to copy copy this key and now throw mine I'm just going to call it pokey and I'm going to call it fetch key now we know that they're keys once you've done that you would probably want to also create the functions for them void throw so this function will throw and this function will help you fetch once you created those two uh, you can just right click them and create declaration definition and do the same for fetch uh, it might take a while to load so I'm just gonna skip this part okay now that I create this these functions in the CPP I'm just gonna quickly check as you can see you have your activate throw and fetch now you're gonna go back here and change this to throw right there and this key is going to be throw key select it right there and this is going to be fetch key and finally this is just going to be fetch now we have our boundaries to the functions but just in case that this input component is not valid meaning there was no comp there's no control in this one group here we might want to protect this one we might want to protect this one if, if the input component is true it's correct right but it wouldn't be correct to say that it's not correct at first it's like it's just it's just a value but if it's correct we can still use it so we will type in is valid which is a function that validates and we're just going to take this paste it here and we're going to control x and control v all of that so that it's all in the validate there you go once that's finished we go to the next thing which is finally to draw the line using ray trace so to make a ray trace we need the camera so first since the camera uh, that we're getting from the player is a pointer to the camera what if this component's on an actor that doesn't have camera then you're in big trouble because it's the program's going to crash so first we're going to protect our camera component because we're going to use it to draw a line and if camera is invalid then it's very bad so player camera uh, this is the one we need to check we're just going to use um, unreal's is valid function to make sure it's valid and oh actually what we're going to do is we're going to check uh, if it's not valid so if it's not valid we can just return false we can just return control x control v and we can just return false so now anything that happens beneath this function uh, beneath this if statement is basically happening only if it's valid now we're going to create a ray trace to do that um, we have to create a ray trace from the world and it's part of the world so luckily we already added your world before from the engine dot world uh, sorry engine slash world dot h now we're going to get world instance and then um, we're going to look for line trace by object so there you go that's line trace sorry that's multi we're going to look for line trace single by object type now this this function looks like it's going to return if it a boolean so if it hits something or not and 
it needs few parameters and it takes the parameters as references. So this means we have to um, create those parameters and pass it to, to this function. And it will take them as uh, direct references. So to do that, uh, we're going to first create that hit result and then the start location of the trace line, uh, which, is, which will be the camera point, and the end location, which would be the forward vector of the camera plus its location. And it requires a collision object params, which are basically what type of objects do you want to hit, like world static or other players or what, what type of collision. That's basically, that's all you need. The rest is autofill. So first we're going to create the hit result. Hit result, library. We'll create the hit. After this, we're going to need a vector. So vec uh, all the struts or and vectors are all um, start, they all are prefixed with F. So that, that's how you know if it's a struct. And with, I'm going to call this start. And this is going to be player's camera location. Camera point to your axis and its members and you're going to type in get location sorry it's get component location now you have the start location you need the end location it's going to be players um, it's going to be players location which right here you define as start location so you can say you can actually say start plus sorry start plus um, player camera uh, forward vector so you want forward vector so you're gonna just type in get forward vector and you're going to times the forward vector uh, by distance. So this is going to be the distance for your first line that you're going to um, check the wall. So you need to know how much distance, uh, which you're going to create a variable. You can create another variable here called, it's going to be a float. This will be a throw distance. So this is the maximum distance that you're going to be able to detect the first wall and throw the mine. So this will be throw throw distance. And we're gonna take that and times it right here. And this is going to be your end location. So that will be your start plus the camera's uh, forward vector times uh, throw distance. We can um, pre uh, give some, some value to this like we can do 1000 point of that's float once that's finished you can the last and final parameter you really need is to create a uh, collision parameter so for that you're going to create f f collision object and you're just going to call them correct parents sorry correct intelligence is a bit slow uh, correct parents and now you're just going to uh, pass this uh, all these objects into the into the uh, ray trace so to do that we're just going to go one by one so we're going to say hit the first one it wants and it wants a start location we're gonna pass start and it wants the end location we're gonna pass the end location and finally current parents once we once we have that we're gonna make sure that um, uh, we're gonna set current parents to um, detect um, some sort of wall so here you can choose Correct parents. Dot. 
because this is not a pointer, this is a normal uh, uh, normal variable, so we're going to use dot, and we're going to add object types. And what these are is basically collision channels for the object. Collision channels, in notion. And we can choose whatever we want. Uh, if you noticed in, so our ray trace should only be able to detect things like walls and like static objects. So we're going to choose foil static, which is an option right here. Now uh, you can, uh, if you want, you can choose other things like uh, physics bodies or world dynamic things, but it's up to you. So this thing has been added now, which means we'll be able to detect um, walls here. But if you want to detect things like these boxes, you can click on the box and come here and check its collision uh, presets and it will say it's a physics body, that's its object type. Whereas these walls are, walls are just default, like they would be default to uh, wall static objects. It does not show here, but uh, by the, if I type in custom, yeah, if, if I check it as custom, it will show that it's a wall static because it's, uh, it's by default wall static. So that's its default. We're going to go back into the uh, Visual Studio, and for now we'll only do wall static. That's completely fine. So this will be our first line. So this will actually be boolean. We're going to convert this into a variable as first hit. So this function returns the first hit, and now if we actually did detect the first hit. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a second ray trace from that first hit wall to a different wall. So if first hit is true, then we're going to once again draw another trace. But before we draw this trace, because you can't actually see this trace, we need to be able to see this trace. To do that, what we need to do is we need to draw a debug line, which will help us um, visualize the line when we're playing. So to draw a debug line, we need to include the debug header, which uh, like I showed before, you can actually search up in Unreal documentation and you'll have the include file right here. You just control C and then control V. Oh, sorry, not here. You do write in the header. And now all you need to type is, you need to just type draw debug line. And you'll see the function. It requires, um, well, a start location, end location, and color. Um, and it also requires lifetime and thickness. So for this, we're gonna first give the world, distance of the world. And then, for the start location, we're actually going to start the debug line from the player's um, uh, hand, or let's just say the gun. So we're going to go here and we're going to see what our gun has. Sorry. We're just going to go into Unreal Engine. Um, as you can see, we actually have a spear component that we can start the line from. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the spear component. So we're going to go back here, create location for the spear. So we're going to get the location of the spear. Debug start location is going to be, we're going to get the element. We're going to find component by class. And this is going to be you. use spirit component and if you want to access any of the e e um, anything about the use spirit component you just do what uh, I showed you before just go here type in spirit component and it should come up right here in C++ API and you can just include that And now it uh, recognizes it and then um, just go back here and sorry uh, we have to first make sure that uh, the spirit component we're gonna get the location
right there. And once you have that, now that's your debug start. Debug start and let's switch your hat. And for the end location, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take the hit, the result that we got from um, doing the get well line single uh, line trace. We're just going to give an enter so we know. Uh, by doing the line trace, we actually it actually modifies with hit this um, hit object that we created, and it actually gives a location. So here we're going to type hit dot location, and that will basically give the end location that we just hit. The next thing we need is an F color. We can just uh, create an F color. do that and finally for the rest we can just put anything there we don't want it to last uh, any duration for any duration maybe if you want thickness as um, 1.5 then just choose whatever it doesn't really matter and then once that that will basically draw the debug line now we're gonna um, compile and check uh, if we uh, to compile you can just minimize this go back to your uh, engine and just hit compile and that will compile uh, I'll be I'll be right back after it compiles. All right, I have compiled and I seem to have gotten errors. So the error is basically um, it's a return um, error. So I forgot to return. Um, not all parts were returning, so it, it was returning false here. So now we're just gonna say return false. Return false, and we can put that here as well if you want. It doesn't really matter over here. Uh, once we do that, uh, we can try compile again. So I'll click this and it'll compile. Ah, I, I seem to have gotten another error. But this error, it doesn't really uh, specify which line. It just says um, error, it just says linker error. So this might happen um, for, you, uh, for you guys as well. And this is mostly caused because of uh, not uh, including some modules. So. It says these three functions, which are the input functions that we put, are not valid because to make them valid, uh, they depend on certain modules and we need to add the modules in the project build folder. So we're going to go into the project build file and right over here, we need to include um, some, um, we actually include two modules and they're basically slate core and slate. So we're just going to do this. It's a string. So it's going to be slate core and slate. Once you type this over here in the private mod or private dependency uh, dependency modules, you can go back and try compile again. All right, uh, my code successfully compiled. Now I'm going to go back into the trapfire.cpp. Um, I can just remove this. This is if it's it actually it should return true. That doesn't matter. We're going to go back um, here, and we're going to first put some blueprint, blueprint, and we're going to our character blueprint. We're just going to uh, wait for it to load, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to search for a component. We're gonna uh, type in trap wire, and it seems like we don't, uh, re uh, we can't find it. Uh, that's because we have to make sure that we go back to our file, and we need to include. We have to make sure that um, we need to include something in the U class, so it's actually we can find it in the blueprints. To do that, you can go back to your ability.h right here, and then here you can see. That is specified over here and just copy that paste it in here and you just recompile again once it's recompiled you now can go back into the blueprints and look for Trapfire. there you go now you probably see that um there's no real options to choose any of your buttons because before we assign some buttons in the in our code, 
uh, that's because uh, we actually haven't exposed it just like we, how we expose this component to the blueprints we have to also expose our buttons and to do that we're going to type in view property and we're going to we're going to type in view property it anywhere be right and that will that means we can actually choose this button and when you choose this what we want uh, what we want is basically this is this function this will activate this function when you press the button this function is called and you want to what you want to do is you want to turn on the detecting walls but to do that detect walls have to be running every frame so that you actually have to find um, the wall every frame so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a boolean about this detect walls and we're gonna call it is active so when you press um, when you press the activate key it's gonna call this fun activate function and the activate function is gonna uh, turn this into true because by default it's false false and it's gonna turn into true and as soon as is active is true on tick we're gonna type in if is active we're gonna um, we're going to keep detecting uh, we're gonna try and detect walls and we're gonna declare it uh, make sure this is closed because sometimes we don't have the blueprint closed it doesn't compile properly it doesn't update to your blueprint so just in case we're gonna close this and then uh, we're gonna compile Hey, just a quick note uh, before you uh, go ahead and compile uh, uh, there's one thing I forgot to do which was um, go back into your code and um, go into activate and actually turn on the is active is active boolean to true sorry I forgot this before and once you activate this uh, once you turn this to true uh, it will become um, true here and if it's active it's going to keep detecting walls so now we can go back and compile Okay, um, so once you compiled uh, your project, you can go back into the blueprint and click on your tip trap wire. And if your trap wire like seems like different color or um, it's a bit different, you can actually, um, it's, if it looks big buggy and you don't see this on the screen, you can actually take it out and um, recompile. And then um, you can right click and go uh, to asset actions and you can reload them. Or you can just open it and uh, delete this and again, type in trap wire. If you seem to have any kind of bugs which um, stops your eye from showing it might happen sometimes <coughs> sorry so now you go here to the active key and activate key and then you go and type capital C close this and you should have C here and once you minimize this you play and you hit the C button and you realize that this a little blue line you can see a little blue line in your gun uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little blue line that kind of bugs out. Sometimes it goes to the side of the screen, sometimes it might go around. That's because if you're looking at a distance where you can't detect a wall, it automatically go to um, the debug goes to the zero location, which is somewhere over there. Uh, but if it actually finds a wall, so if you go near a wall, you can see that it, it is detecting. It is detecting the wall. And the line might be very thin, which we can change. But you might also notice that the line is above the crosshair. That's because um, that's not the fault of the ray trace. It's actually the crosshair itself is too low in this template, which makes it projectile only. It's not made for uh, pixel only. So you'll actually still be ray tracing many of the screen. It's just the crosshair that's off. So what you can do now is you can just press escape to escape and quickly compile it. Uh, go back to your blueprint. First, uh, we're going to make it bigger. We're going to increase the bigger. Just like we did this here, we're gonna copy this this header file that we created for trap wire, and we're gonna add this here to throw distance so we can actually increase our throw distance. And while we're at it, we might as well 
I'll also put it for this key so that we can um, uh, change this key as well. And I guess if you recompile now and if you to check, uh, you might see something different. All right, once it's compiled, um, you can actually go back in. And if this is updated, you can see these. And if you don't see this, just like I said before, you might have to um, take the, the compile and then um, go back, recompile it and try refresh it. And uh, once you do that, you should be able to see this number. Now I'm just going to set this number back to zero. And um, you can set this as I'm, uh, I'm just going to set this number. So you press A, this is zero. And if you want to refresh it, you can just do it again. Now, if I press C, now uh, even if I stand far away, I can see that my line is always detecting the wall. But we still have one problem, which is that line is not visible enough. It's, it's too thin. And that's probably because I forgot one of the parameters if I go back here. Uh, before the time, I forgot to, um, forgot to give the boolean, which is going to be false. And then once I do that, All right, now the recompile is finished, I test it. Ah, oh, there you go. Now the line is very thick, and it's detecting the walls. As I explained before, uh, it's going to be above the crosshair, because actually the crosshair isn't in the middle of the screen. It's actually a bit below. It's made for projectiles, so that's fine. It's But if you look up now, the line will automatically go down, because um, you're just pointing to the sky. There's no wall there. But if you point to a wall that's within the distance of uh, 10,000 meters, then you can pro uh, you'll detect it. Now that we can detect one of the lines, we're going to the next thing we have to do is we have to bounce the line off the wall that we're facing. To do that, go back into your code and you're going to draw a second line from here. So to do that, so to do that, uh, we're only going to draw a second line if we uh, hit a wall. So after first hit, we're going to say if and in this if we can just um, copy the same one because we're still detecting another wall. So I'm going to copy. As you can see, do not copy this part accidentally because you don't need to. Once you copy, and you're going to check again that um, if, you hit, if you're hitting a second wall, only then this should turn true. You only detect walls once you detect the first one, sorry, first hit, and you detect the second wall. So that's why we're putting uh, other if statements where uh, we actually return true. But, uh, but the only thing is, uh, the parameters has to be different. Uh, we can still use the same hit result, but now we need a new start. A new start location and a new end location. To do that, what we're going to do is, the new start location is actually going to be the thing that we hit before, I want its location. So that's going to be, oh, sorry. So it's going to be hit location. End is actually, this, is the tr this might be a tricky part, it's going to be hit dot impact normal so what a normal is is basically um it will give uh, it will give you a direction that the wall is facing so it's going to be impact normal times sorry it, it this is asking for the end location now so the end location actually we're going to create a vector and we're going to give it a end location like uh how far do you want um the uh, line to bounce off the wall. So for that, we need to say second end. Uh, we can just say second end, second trace end, trace end. It's going to be giving a location. It will be it will be your hit location. Location plus the 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 way that the direction that the wall that you hit is facing, which is hit dot impact normal times uh, wall bounce distance. So we're going to go back here and we're going to create a new distance right underneath here. Bounce distance. And we're going to actually give it more um, so that we can actually detect one. Actually, let's just do this. Let's give it the same, but actually we're going to put this so we can actually change it um, in blueprints. 
Once we do that, I'm just going to take this again and I'm going to paste it here and that would be bounce distance. That would be our, our second trace end. We, we can take the second trace end and put it here. We no longer need this. And once you have that, it, it's still only going to detect um, our walls, so our static objects, that's pretty good. Once you're done with that, we, uh, so once you did hit a uh, another object, we're not, we're not only going to return true, but we're also going to draw another debug line to see, to visualize the line. So it will be the same as this, these parameters, but it's going to be a bit different. Now, debug start is no longer debug start. We're actually starting from the location that we hit. It will be hit location. Sorry, you, you can't use the hit location because the hit location has been changed after this. After doing this, now the new hit location is the um, lo location of the second wall that you hit. So, what we have to do is we can still do this. We can do a hit dot. If you press start, if you press um sorry, trace start. So hit dot trace start. This will give you the location it's originally started from, which is the first object's hit location. Since hit has been again taken in as a parameter and its values have been changed, that's why we're saying trace start and not location anymore. Because now, for the second uh, wall, we're gonna say hit dot uh, hit dot location, because um, uh, now its hit location is actually the second wall, not the first wall anymore, since this uh, function changed its values. Once we do that. This will uh, draw the second debug line, but what if we didn't detect a second wall because it was out of reach? Then what we can do is draw a debug line. Uh, we're also going to return false. And but in this uh, line, we're actually going to say draw a red line. Oops, sorry. Oops. We're going to draw a red line, and we're also going to we're also going to draw it from um, so if you hit start since you're not hitting any location too far away we're actually going to do this and say trace end location and this means if you didn't uh, detect a second wall it's just going to show you a second red line meaning that there's no wall within reach and go back and compile um, uh, a quick notice before you do the compiling is um, if you go back into your trap h I seem to have forgot a, a syntax right here, um, just like ending the line, and because I got the error, and I can take it out and try to recompile. Oh, sorry, uh, one more thing is, I seem to have made a mistake here, it should be E, simple spelling mistake, and once you fix this as well, and you can compile now. All right, once it's compiled, you can open your uh, blueprints, and make sure everything's there, make sure you have bounce distance. And if you don't have uh, bounce distance, you might have to uh, uh, delete this and um, just do the same process I told you before about recompiling and retrying. Because sometimes, even though you have no errors, it might not compile. Oh, sorry, it might not uh, update the blueprints properly. So I'm going to go back here and see. And as you can see, uh, now I have this heat for both of them, bounce, so distance and bounce distance. And if I press play and press C, ah, oh, there you go. You can see that whenever I do scroll across, it's facing the direction that the wall's facing. And it's a red color, meaning there's no second wall to detect. But if I go here, it's blue. Both lines are blue because it uh, has another wall to detect. And if I go up here, it's red. Here, it's blue. So basically, we completed, um, we completed uh, detecting two walls. Now what we need to do is uh, basically find, um, sorry, basically update the location. So we're going to get the locations that we detected and we're going to save them because we need to save them because we need to later pass on to the trap uh, to set the location of the trap. So before that, we need to first make the trap themselves. So on to the last part. Thank you for watching and in part two, we'll be creating the trap. Like, share and subscribe if you enjoy.